Hey guys, welcome back to Rudder Renovations where today we're gonna be building a simple yet beautiful straight fence. It is raining here today, but it's a godsend because it has been super hot. So I'm actually thankful that we're gonna be working in the rain. Here we go. Whenever you're building a fence, the first thing you might think of is how do I make it into a straight line? I just went and got some string. This is actually kite string because it's very long and you can pull it very tight and it'll create a straight line. You can tack it with some nails at each part of your property line or wherever you're building your fence. And then you'll dig and set your post along that straight line. So the post, when you're digging the hole, it's gonna be big enough to where you can move it around and you can line it up and you'll just line it up flush with that line. And then you should have an extremely straight and beautiful fence. For this project, I had to replace a relatively straight but rotten fence. Before pulling my string tight and to minimize the time I'd be disrupting neighbors, I dug the holes for my post as close to the existing fence as possible before tearing it down. After my string was tight, I tore down the fence and adjusted my post to ensure they were in a straight line. If you're wondering how to space out your post, you can either use a tape measure where I prefer just to lay down one of the two by fours that goes between the posts to see where I should dig my next hole. Your hole depth is supposed to be one third the length of your post. So if your post is eight feet long like ours, your hole should be around 32 inches deep. When setting your post in concrete, you're supposed to fill one third of the hole with water first and then dump the concrete around the post, checking periodically to see if you need to add more water. Once the concrete reaches the top, you can form it to a slope that way the water will go away from the post. If you're lucky, maybe Spider-Man will pay you a visit during your project. As your post sets, make sure to use a level on both sides to ensure it's straight. All right, so we have all of our posts set. We're gonna let these harden overnight, and then we'll come back and we'll put on our two by four by eight braces in between the posts, and then we'll put on the fence pickets. If you need to get rid of the old posts, some of them might be so rotten that all you have to do is push from one side to another and they'll break. That's one way to do it. For other posts that are more stubborn or have a substantial concrete base, using your vehicle might save you time and more importantly, your back. That's another way to do it. If you choose this route, I'd strongly recommend using a static toe strap as opposed to a dynamic rope so there's no bungee effect. Mine is around 40 feet long and provides plenty of distance between the post and the car. My vehicle is only front wheel drive, but if you have a four wheel drive, this process will be a little quicker and most likely won't require a running start on some of your poles. All right, so there's different ways to put up your cross braces. A lot of people will put them up just like this and they're meeting halfway in the middle of the post. I don't really like that because there's only about an inch and a half of a two by four there to screw into and over time the end will rot even if it's pressure treated wood and if you need to reattach it you're going to have to put up a block or something like that in order to reattach this two by four so instead of doing that i'm going to actually pull it the entire length of the post drill it in here and then i'm going to stagger and put the next one here going to the next post and then we'll start back up top and we'll just alternate going back and forth. Now, it might not be as aesthetically pleasing, but if you don't like it on the back side, you're not gonna see it on this side because we'll have a privacy fence up. But on the back side, if your neighbors don't like it, or let's say you're on this side of the fence, you can always do a shadow box or you can do a privacy fence on both sides, and then it won't matter. If you don't have anybody to help you hold up your cross braces, you can always take a block of wood and screw it in underneath for each section to hold it up while you go and attach the other part. During the process of installing my cross braces that the pickets will be attached to, I also use a string to ensure I'm creating a straight line. As you see, I didn't have anyone to help me install these, so I used the block technique I mentioned earlier to hold up one end of the 2x4 as I screwed in the other. To attach my cross braces to the 4x4 post, I used 3.5 inch screws. Alright, we've reached the final day of our fence build where today we're going to be putting up pickets. If you want a straight line, you can go ahead and pull that string tight at the top of the fence, and then you'll cut the bottom of the fence boards to where the top is even with that line that you've pulled. Or some people just put it and they have the fence on the ground and it's kind of going up and down with the contour of the ground. 
It's totally up to you. I like for my fence to look straight, so I'm gonna match it up with that top line that I pulled, and I'll cut any boards that need to be cut. I can either add earth or I can get longer pickets if need be to meet the ground if there's a gap underneath. All right, as you're putting up your pickets, an easy way to know where to cut it is to flip it upside down where you want it to be. You can take your speed square, make sure it's even with that line, draw the line, and now you know exactly where to cut it, and then you'll flip it back over, and it should be perfectly in line with your strength. As you're installing your fence pickets, you want to make sure and have a level handy. That way you make sure that your pickets are going straight up and down. If they do get out of alignment, which happens because some of these boards are warped, you'll just want to adjust it a little over time as opposed to making it straight up and down on one board because it can leave a large gap. I would check about every four or five pickets just to make sure they're going straight up and down. And if it's not, adjust it over the course of a few boards, that way it's not as noticeable. I used one and a quarter inch exterior screws to attach my pickets. And because the elevation of this yard is lower towards the middle of the fence, we had to purchase eight foot boards and cut them down so there wouldn't be a gap at the bottom of the fence in order to meet up with our string. Some people like to use nails to build their fence because it can be quicker, but screws will hold better over time. All right, when you get to the last picket, you can just measure the distance that you need the picket to be. In this instance, it's about four inches and you will just rip along that line. And if you want it to be pretty, you can trace one of the dog ears, cut it off, that way it matches the rest of the fence. All right, guys, that's how you build a simple, straight, and beautiful fence. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comment below. If you like it, like it, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.